Hey everyone, welcome to my channel on this beautiful morning. The wind is hardly blowing. I can hear little frogs in the back in the pond behind me. It's really nice out here this morning. The sun is coming up. It's filtering through a tree. Ah, it's gorgeous, but it's going to cloud over and rain soon, so I better get this video out. All right, so we have the Recon 6 with us today. Now, I've reviewed the Recon uh, 3, 4, 5, and now we're up to the 6. So you're wondering, why do they just keep making these numbers go one increment higher? Well, that's because of the prop size. So the Recon 6 has six inch props on it. So when you put a six inch prop on it, it means the arms really have to spread out. And when you spread the arms out and put a six inch prop on a drone, it means stability is like out of this world. This one here is designed to take a 4S battery or a 6S battery. I'm looking down because I have my batteries here. So let me just show you. This is a 4S battery that I'm gonna fly it with today i'm going to give it a shot with a 4s it's very small check out the same battery in the 6s format it's much larger if you want 30 minutes of flight time you have to use a battery like this they make one that's a 4000 you can you can buy one and if you stick the 4000 on here then you get like the 30 minutes of flight time now i should mention something about the props if i bring this really close to the camera look at how they are mounted they have a tiny little nut in the center i've never seen that before they call it t-mounted props normally on an fpv drone you either put two two screws that go into the props to hold them in place if it's a small prop if it's a big prop it's always a big nut that you stick on well it's the same idea except it's a very tiny nut for weight saving now in the weight saving world you would think oh my god they must be saving weight because they want it to be under 250 grams well it's about 250 grams as configured without the GoPro. So whatever battery you stick on it, you're over 250 grams. But then again, it is a long range drone. So long range, very stable, big props. Put a 4S, the props will not be as crazy, less weight. You'll get long range, super long antenna with the VTX here. 800 milliwatt VTX, so that's pretty good for long range. I don't think I have mine set at 800 for today. I think it's, uh, I don't even know what I have it set at. I might have it set pretty low. I'm not gonna fly it far today because this is just a morning where it's very quiet, no one's around, and I'm just gonna take it for a nice little spin around this area here, not very far. I just wanna see how it flies. Uh, it also has a GPS in it, which I'm not gonna use for this here video. The GPS rescue is in case I go too far, and all of a sudden I lose control with my transmitter and everything, I can turn on the GPS rescue and then come back to me, which is a nice thing to have. They're putting on a lot of drones nowadays, especially long range, because you need it. If you fly long range and then you go too low to the ground behind some objects, you might you might lose your connection. So what else does it have? It has the finder beeper, as would be expected for a long range drone. There's a beeper on the back. In other words, if you crash and your battery flies off, well, you're never gonna find your drone because you have no more video to look in your goggles, see where you are. But this beeper is self-powered and will go off and beep and beep for about 45 minutes to an hour until you find the drone and there's a little light on it as well. And it's pretty loud. So you're gonna find, you're definitely gonna find your drone. Mine has a crossfire unit in it. Uh, I never asked for crossfire fire but uh, this is the first time somebody sent me one with a crossfire unit and uh, check this out look at the antenna see if I can show this right here so this crossfire unit has something that's pretty sweet look at the antenna so when you fly you can put the antenna vertically you know like it's from top or from one end to the other end here hopefully it's showing up in the camera um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. You can get really long range with that. And then when you want to just put it away and store it, you just push the antenna down like that. That's pretty sweet. I haven't seen that on too many drones before. So it's a really nice touch that they put it on this. But then again, it is a recon FPV. And as you know, I've said it many times, a recon FPV will usually be the highest of quality in parts that they put in their drones because they want to be known as the top dog in the FPV long range drone world. And so far, they pretty much are. You can see on the bottom too, if there's enough light right here, two aluminum bolts go right through. They hold this frame super secure to everything else. The arms and everything else is held super secure. So there's no vibrations going through this. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but it has an F7 flight controller. It has ESCs in it that can shoot pretty high. So I think they're 28 amp ESCs. These motors, if I look at them, they're 2105.5, 1500 kV. And with the ESCs and the motors, as I mentioned at the start of this video, it can go from a 4S battery all the way up to a 6S. And that's what I'm gonna try in this video. And uh, what's the last thing I wanna tell you? Oh, the camera up front that you're going to see when I'm flying uh, from my pilot camera is a CADX Rattel 2. This is an entirely analog drone. It's not digital. This is fully analog. So 
it's not super expensive when it comes to a recon drone. When you go digital, they get more expensive. So this one here is priced very nice. And that's why I'm just going to fly it calmly around here. Now let me show you this. Uh, when I do fly it, since it is analog, I'm going to use my Fat Sharks. That means when I record the video from the pilot's camera, it's going to record inside the Fat Sharks. Fat Sharks are not made to record cinematic footage. They're only made to record video so that if you crash your drone, you can replay the video and see where you crashed it. So it's very low resolution. And finally, I'm going to use my RadioMaster TX16S right here. And I do have my crossfire unit on the back since they put a crossfire unit in this here uh, drone. So uh, let's go fly it. First flight is going to be with this four cell 850 battery. Now I should mention I have a GoPro Hero 7 on the drone that's going to show you video as well as you're going to see the video from the pilot camera. The GoPro Hero 7 has a GPS in it. I'm going to enable the GPS to show me the speed. So when I fly with the uh, four cell, you know, I'll uh, fly it for one point uh, at a good speed and I'll see what the top speed is. And then I'll do the same later with a, a 6S battery. All right, so uh, let's take her up. So this is with a four cell. It's supposed to be a very smooth flying drone and my God, is it ever smooth? Look at this. How well, smooth it flies here. I'll bring it back to me. Look at that. Look at this. It's not punchy at all. I was expecting it to be like super punchy, you know, like fling, fly up in the air, but no, nah, you just, this is like a Sunday driver flying around. You're just flying around here. One thing I have to be careful of is this school right in front of me here. It uh, has a pile of Wi-Fi in it and it gives off interference. I can see it on my screen. Um, everybody knows about it and we all avoid the school, but here I am today over by the school because there's supposed to be soccer games happening. So I want to stay away from the kids before they come up and do their soccer games. Let's go over here. My God. My God, with the GoPro on the front, it weights it down. I'm going to tell you that right now. So with my tiny little 4S 850 battery, it's not what I'm used to. I'm used to drones that you just touch the throttle and you punch. So you saw when I was coming to those trees, I just skimmed the tops because I was given a throttle and it was like it, it wasn't uh, punching. I have to move the throttle a bit farther. So I'm going to say right now, drones like this are just so perfect for beginners. You cannot get into trouble because normally on an FPV drone, you just sneeze on the throttle control. And uh, yeah, what's going to happen is the drone is going to fly up in the air super fast and you're going to be all confused on what's going on. But this one, no, nothing like that. You have to really move the throttle to get it to go, which is so, so nice. Really, really nice and enough power. I would assume, yeah, you could flip it. And that was like a fast flip. So let's try. The quality of a drone is how slow you can flip it. Slow flip, yep, no problem there. And I guess my question is, how would the 6S battery then uh, do compared to this? Because it's freaking heavy, but it is a 6S powered battery. Right now on my screen, it's not saying I'm low power or anything. And this is what the 850 pulling a GoPro. So this is very efficient, a very, very efficient drone. Uh, I took off before letting the GPS rescue get uh, satellites. You see it says up the top right, it's showing a big zero. Uh, that's because it won't get any satellites because I didn't let it get any satellites. There we go. Going this way, going this way, coming around this way, the sidewalks. And back over to me, over here. here. I'll bring it over and land it over here. All right. Pull back. See if the GoPro can get it. And let's bring it down for a landing over here. There we go. Just want to show you the little 850 milliamp hour four cell battery I had on the back. So there it is. That's what I was flying with. Tiny, tiny battery on this massive drone. You know, it's very odd. I would never fly with an 850 milliamp hour battery on a drone this large, but I did. And it never gave me any problems with being out of power. It, uh, it, it's, it's so efficiently tuned that it doesn't pull all the power out to give you that throttle blipping, going crazy, freestyle or amazing, I don't know, stuff. It's it's really tuned for long range. Yeah, it's it, it's a long range drone. All right, let me see if I can get this in the picture here. So this is my 6S six six battery. <laughs> Look at it. Watch this. If I stick it there, it's massive. It it probably weighs, well, it probably weighs almost twice as much. So that means with a 6S, a lot more voltage, 
but a lot more weight. All right, let's go with the 6S battery. Let's see how she performs. Since I have the 6S, I've let the GPS rescue get the satellites so that I can see the speed in the top right corner of your video here. Yes, arm the motors, everything down. And uh, I've turned the satellites on so you can see them up in the top right hand corner. So I've got 11 satellites that will give me the speed. I just want to see what it is with the 6S motors just buzzing around me. Same, I'm not going far, but here we go. I notice a little bit more blipping, but yeah, you see like that, a lot faster, right? Not as smooth, not as smooth. And can you hear it? It's just a howling. It's just a going crazy. This is insane. Here, chase the birdies. You hear the props just a screaming because they got to lift that weight. And then when they lift the weight, uh, they're just going to power this thing forward. So watch this here. See my speed go way up there? It's uh, quite fast. Yeah, let's go this way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank it over here. Come back. Let's see what our speed is. Man, that is scary. It, it reminds me of like dive bombers or something. It is crazy. Before I landed, I think the fire department is uh, gonna shoot some water. They always do their little fire department stuff over in the river here. Yep, they're doing their little fire thingy. And I could just hear them talking, hey, there's a guy with a drone. All right, let's take it back over here. You can see it with all the weight of that battery coming down. Boink! Missed the landing pad, but close enough. All right, here we go. I've got another 6L on here. This thing's going to scream, and uh, we're going to follow a plane. The drone can go pretty fast. It can do maybe about 80 kilometers an hour, but uh, in short bursts. Okay, well, let's, let's do the space bar. Okay, it's sounds kinda good. It's kind of cool. All right. The biggest problem with putting a battery on is I can't tilt the GoPro back far enough no to get the angle of the pilot's camera, which is going to be an issue. All right, we're up and flying and we're about to chase the plane. Now, the first thing I noticed after I reviewed the video was that, yes, my pilot camera and the GoPro were not at the same angle. The GoPro needed to be tilted back farther and that huge battery was blocking it. So I did get a lot of footage, but sometimes the plane goes out of the video as you see here. Now the Recon 6 had no problem chasing a plane, but let me tell you this, if you've never chased an RC plane before, RC planes can climb and dive very fast as well. They can turn extremely quickly. Now a drone can do pretty much the same thing, except the plane and the drone have no brakes. So when a plane accelerates, it cannot slow down quickly. And when a drone accelerates, neither can it. So watch the speed at the bottom as I'm increasing acceleration and trying to decrease just by the force of gravity. And uh, you'll see we're gonna get into a bit of a problem coming up. So right here, you see my altitude on the left. You see my speed on the right. I'm chasing the plane. And you'll notice neither the altitude nor the speed remain stable. They keep on changing because the plane's going up and down as well as the speed and I'm trying not to crash into the plane as I'm flying here. Now, if I get too close to a plane, I just fly under it or over it. But what happens if a plane is coming up as I'm going down? Well, we're gonna see it right here. Watch this. Chasing the plane, neither of us have brakes. I'm going down, plane's coming up and whoa, we almost collide. Let's slow that down and check this out again. I swear, watch how close we're gonna come. I swear we are less than an inch apart when we almost hit. So after that close call, I decide to land the drone to keep it in one piece for this review. Fire truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Photo hogs. Always trying to get in my photos. All right, before I give you my final thoughts on the Recon 6, which is pretty darn cool, uh, let me show you what comes in the box. Check this out. This would be the box the Recon 6 comes in, and these would be the specifications of the Recon 6 that I reviewed in this video. The CAD DX Retail 2 camera is very well protected up front, and the carbon fiber design of this drone is really good. Very solid. If you buy spare batteries for this drone, please ensure they have an XT60 connector. The drone is compatible with most cameras that require external power. Two sets of Gemfan Hurricane 6-inch props are included. Two battery straps are included as well as the hardware for a naked GoPro mount. You do receive a pile of screws, some are for prop mounting and some are just spares. 
The Zeus F7 flight controller diagram is included in case you wish to add other items to the flight controller. And let's not forget the Recon FPV stickers. Two optional carbon fiber arm braces are included and you can install them as I did in this video. Please note that if you do install the arm braces, it will put the drone over 250 grams. All right, firefighter guys are over there and we have this rule, what's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this here is the beeper I was talking about. I just unplugged the battery. So if I would have crashed this drone, this beeper would go off and it would sound like that. And I don't know, you can see there's a little light on the bottom too. Maybe if I move it, you can see it. If it was nighttime, the light would shine up. So there's an on off switch right over here, kind of hard to see, but uh, that's how you turn the beeper off. It would run for another 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll hold that in and then I will tell you my final thoughts on this off all right so in Canada uh, whenever we have emergency services you're not allowed to fly drones around them even if they're practicing or whatever because you never know what they're really doing they're just practicing there I was here first I know but uh, anyways those are the rules uh, drone rules in Canada so I can't fly this anymore so let me just sum up really quick and tell you what I think about this recon 6 I honestly preferred it with a four cell battery so let me just put this down and show you the difference in the batteries I showed you once already but I'll show you again so both of them are 850 that's an 856 cell that's an 854 cell look at the width of the four cell and look at the width of the six cell a huge amount of weight on the six cell because there's two extra cells than on the four cell this drone flew like a Sunday driver on the four cell and I preferred that because it's a long-range drones so if you're not familiar if you're new to FPV long-range drones should all fly like Sunday drivers they should fly so smooth you're just cruising over the treetops you're having a great time, really smooth turns and motions because they just trickle out the power into the ESCs, into the motors, and the battery lasts for a long time. They're all designed to give you an awfully long flight time on whatever battery you use. And if you use, I have a battery over here, if you use a battery like this, then you're, you're getting close to the 30 minute mark with stuff like that. So that's what they're designed for. And oh, I should mention, if I used a battery like this and I was coming at a tree, I'd probably hit the tree. You have to really give it throttle long before you hit the tree to get it up when you're using a battery like this. It, there's just not a lot of, it trickles out the power, let's just put it that way, for a drone this size. And if I was doing long range, I probably would not put a GoPro on it either. I'd probably put something lighter, like an Insta360 Go or an Insta360 or a naked GoPro or an SMO 4K or even uh, iFlight. They have a new uh, camera out too. So all in all, if you're in the market for a long range drone, Recon makes a pile of them. So they've got the 6, they've got the 5, they got the 4, and so on and so forth. And it just goes on that way. So I would say say um, look at one that's in your price range you know the four the five or the six and find one that is for you all that happens when you go up in those numbers four five six is the props get larger the larger the props the more they can lift that's it so if you plan that you want to always fly with a full-size GoPro you're gonna need the six but if you're gonna use something lighter then you can get the four or the five and that's it they're all the same all the everything the features on them are all the same because they're made really high quality all right guys I'm gonna put links to this product below go check it out I don't know if there's any discounts there might be discounts on the Banggood website so I'll put links to that as well check it out see if it's for you and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you have questions on anything you saw today just post them below and I will get back to you thanks for watching take care catch you in the next one bye